of the war in Ukraine now entering a 10th month. Um, Ukrainian drones hit targets in Russia. Uh, that surprised many. Uh, Russia has responded. For more, let's welcome in our team of experts. Fred Flight's back with us and General Blaine Holt also with us. General, um, what's the state of this war now 10 months in? Well, we're at a definite inflection point right now. It's gotten very dangerous. The Russians just absolutely covered up Ukraine with missiles last night. The, the winter is grinding on. Uh, these two enemies are grinding at each other. How long is this going to go before we get to some sort of negotiation, negotiation table? And, and are we in a place where we have unlimited resources to keep prosecuting this? How long before Zelensky does something really desperate in defense of his nation, whether it's in Crimea or uh, upwards towards Moscow, where they've been hitting strikes? Um, I've been talking to Fred about this, and I know uh, you, you've definitely got some ideas about uh, what's coming are you next. Saying, are you saying, General, side. are you saying a false flag operation or something to try and drag... NATO or others into the war? Well, that's a possibility. I, the, the, the more they up the, 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 the cost on Russia, the more likely it is that it could actually pull NATO more into this thing. It just depends on what the actual scenario would be. So I wouldn't say false flag, right. but I would say that the capitals of Europe will respond uh, uh, to whatever developments come next. And seeing these two strikes in Russian territory certainly ups the game. Fred, I want to talk to you about China. Um, North Korea, Iran, a, a lot is happening right now. Uh, is President Xi, is he vulnerable for maybe the first time in his term right now as leader in China? Well, from what I, from what I can tell from my experts, the answer is absolutely no. I think he really has cemented his position on power. This is not like the Tiananmen, Tian, Tiananmen situation of years right. ago where the Chinese government was divided, where there were some Chinese officials who thought that maybe the protesters had leg, uh, legitimate uh, complaints. This is an effort by an authoritarian government that is extremely well armed, prepared to keep the people down. They're throwing out, I think, some bones to, to keep the, the protests under control, but they are not in any danger of being overthrown. The New York Times had some reporting last week as those pro-democracy, anti-Xi protests took place throughout China that maybe Joe Biden is not commenting on the protest directly because he's got to pick his battles when it comes to President Xi. What do you make of that? Uh, because that was the excuse the New York Times posed uh, to readers. Um, do you think there's something to that? Because really, uh, the Biden administration, it's in their best interest to make sure that China is not supporting Russia in this war in Ukraine. I, I think that's possible, but I think there's a larger philosophical problem in that this administration sees global politics as a new era of competition. And, and, and they're saying that the protesters are simply engaging in peaceful protest. They're not protesting for freedom. This is an opportunity for President Biden to say that the people of China yearn to be free, and China should let them be, to be free, that this government is wrong, that communism doesn't work. But this new era of competition treats, chi treats these protests as if they're protesting a bridge or whether it's a labor dispute. There's no value judgments. Right. This is a move away from American exceptionalism, too, which I find very troubling. So it's not, just, it's not just the conflict in Russia or the economy. It is a major philosophical error by this administration. We saw in the Obama administration, it's much worse under Biden. Okay. Uh, General, uh, Time magazine has named President Zelensky their 2022 uh, person of the year. Um, I don't think this comes as a surprise to many. Uh, what, what do you make of that? So I would actually change that. I would change it to the Ukrainian citizen and the Ukrainian soldier as the uh, person or the collective of the year, because these people are in an existential fight. Um, they're watching their country and their lives being destroyed. They're enduring war crimes. Uh, President Zelensky is the leader. Uh, we shouldn't take away uh, what he's done to try to keep this together, but 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 this is this is where we're at. I would reflect it on all of Ukraine. Has some of I like that. Has some of the patina of President Zelensky. You know, we know when the war began. You know, famously, Joe Biden said, "Listen, we'll, we'll give you a helicopter ride out of uh, out of Kiev," and he said, "I don't need a ride. I need ammo." Um, there was there was Zelensky warship for months and months. Leaders from all over the world descended upon Kiev to to meet uh, and support, show their support for President Zelensky. Has that shifted a little bit in the last ten months? I think it has a little bit because I think he's missing an opportunity. And the opportunity he's got to take now is to take stock of the strategy that he has before him to forge. And that means there's got to be an off-ramp to the war. The war can't go like it is in an infinite way. And rather than having the terms dictated to him, he needs to join a dialogue of some sort. And we've got to go find an off-ramp as, as a global community. General Blaine Holt, Fred Flight's great having you back on set. Good to see you again. Thank you. Good to be here.
No crooked, crooked establishment. None of that twisting the truth. No talking down don't to me. Don't tell me how to think. Don't tell me how to think. Don't tell me how to think. I trust Newsmax. Newsmax. They don't tell, tell me how to think. think. They let, let me decide. Newsmax. Real news. For real people.